population. It's once called Unity Cup, and once again out there in Cameroon, the theme of the competition is unity. Let's foster unity in Africa. Let's be friends with each other. Let nations help nations. Let individuals help each other. We rise by lifting others. Well, I'd say how Joel will be in the studio, and we are looking at today's matches. Uh, Joel, teams are making it to this quarter final. Even though there is a lot of money at stake. Yeah. Yeah. But we first need to consider the, you know, the pride of the nation. Mm. What are you expecting today? Ah uh, well. Against uh, Equatorial Guinea. Ah uh, yeah. Um. I, I, now, if you have to extra both teams, um, look at Mali the way they qualify. You know, they, 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 they shocked the whole world by beating Tunisia. They took Tunisia to the cleaners, yeah. one zero. That late goal, I think they got that goal nineteen minutes, you know, yeah. uh, towards yeah. the end, regulation yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. and ever since they, they kept on improving, you know, as the game progresses. Um, these guys could be underdogs, you never can tell because they have one or two good players, you know, playing that trade in Europe and all that. Sure. So uh, they're gonna keep, they're gonna fire from most cylinders. That is exactly what they do. That is the technique they apply in all their games. Because sometimes when you build a particular formation, it's like you're playing. When you find that formation doesn't work for you, you change it. I don't want to talk about a Nigerian game because at some point we, we, we run out of ideas. That was where you find out too much individual play. It, it, it doesn't help. So, and, the, and the Malians, they have, they have this style of play. They shoot from us. These guys are very strong. And they can survive any kind of weather. So it's going to be a very serious game. Equatorial Guinea, they're going, yeah, fine, they're going to play, but I want to give it to the Malians. The first match together was 16th of February 1970. It was, you know, uh, it was a kind of something that, it was a match that, you know, Mali took to uh, mm -hmm. to clean out. Equatorial Guinea, they never had any win against you know, Mali in their three matches together. You know, it's just been 3 0, 1 0, 1 0 for, you know, for Mali. Yeah. And today's match is, you know, today's match will be their fourth time they will be meeting. Yeah. And, you know, just like you said, the Mali, they, they've come to this competition taking things easy by themselves. Yeah. You know, and they've not really even matched their own standard. Also. Exactly, yeah. But, you know, the kind of players they brought to this, you know, to, I mean, to, the, to Cameroon this year, you need to understand that they should be telling themselves that they can't, they can't afford not to. Not to either get to the you know final or lifting the cup, you know against Ecuador again. Ecuador uh, again, the way they qualify, you know, you, you, you need to understand that yeah. a lot of people have this kind of you know yeah. uh, sympathy for them yes. else to overstep yes. anything. Uh -huh. Do you fancy their chance against Mali? Um, as the Duke would say, Considering element of what surprise. They, did against, they keep against Cote d'Ivoire. They keep having this element element of surprise and all that. Mm -hmm. And when they play and the, and the way they deployed other teams, it was against run of play. They got their goal. So yes, yes. something is really working out for these guys. I don't know if they have like a reserve on their tank because when you think they're tired, they keep coming out. They, they keep, keep coming out. They come, they come out in batches. Attack and attack and attack. So you know what's happening? They get a goal and try yeah. to manage the game at the end of the game. So I see these guys going far, but not against the Malians. The Malians, they have to be very careful because these guys, they could stop the pressure and come out in the last minute, get the goal and, you, you know. know. They, 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 let's quickly mirror their, you know, their, 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 match, their match against Cote d'Ivoire and the way they got their, you know, equalizer. You know, remember uh, uh, this that game guy. ended three. Uh, I think yeah, in two, you know, I think it was two two, two two. Mm. You understand? And the way they got their second goal, you know, the, when the goalkeeper spilled the ball, and you need to understand that the high pressing team, they come at you, even even though you are going to you know get them on the counter, but they they, 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 they don't relent. They just come. They continue to come at you, just like you said. Where they get their energy? I I, I, I wonder. I wonder. I, yeah, like the game against Cote d'Ivoire, they know, I mean, look, look at the quality of players they have. All you need to do, don't, don't let them play. Go after them. But be, be careful of card. Because when you, when, you, when you keep, you know, I, I mean, considering your look at, it, it slows down your ability, yeah. your marking ability and your input and all that. So they're very, very careful. At the same time, they come at, they, they come at you when the tank is finished and they employ this reserve and they... How they, they keep shooting from Arsenal. That probably and you, you also need to understand that their the, the disciplinary record in this competition you know, has been fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. You've not gotten record yes. so far. Mm -hmm. and, you know that that gives them, I think, the impetus to yes. like, you know aggressive marking, yeah, yeah. you know counter counter attacking and you know high pressing. You still have to be you still have to be very careful about aggressive marking so you don't get you know implicated because. A lot of these guys are very smart. When they win the ball before you and they make you see the ball, you, you, you before you know what's happening, they take it away from you. Yeah, and obviously. yeah. So <laughs> it's gonna be a tight game. I mean, against the Malians. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's Ivory Coast. After what they did to Algeria. Yeah. A lot of people say. <laughs> 
that's that's your winner for okay for, you know, a lot of people said i i don't believe so mm. i don't believe so because you know just yeah they too they've been considering goals yeah they've been considering goals and because even against algeria mm -hmm. you think the way they dominated that might they will never concede yeah. goal, and eventually they go yeah know, they considered one you know let's let, let's start by looking at that man up front sebastian heller in a place with ayas yeah and nobody a lot of people thought he would pray for france yep you understand and now he's with ivory coast you know and he's getting the goals for them what do you make of his performance so far in the competition um looking at hala um first off i was surprised seeing him you know um you know i'm putting on that jersey for ivory coast i was like okay I mean, you're, you're, you're back home, so you, let's see if you could do it like what you do, what you, what you do, what you did in England, and what you're doing in, I mean, in Holland, and 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 he did it, he, 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 did, it, he did it. I mean, a couple of nations. Yeah, you see, I scoring wonderful. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Scoring, scoring wonderful goals. At some point, I was like, is this guy an African? Because you see him running back, picking the game from the midfield, going back to the attack, scoring goals. So this guy is simply fantastic. It tells you, look. If I can tell her, I could be the African best in, in, in the near future. I, I, I give it to Hala. He, he still has goals to score. Yes, I believe so. I've seen the team, Cote d'Ivoire, let's, let's, let's meet them holistically. As a team, there is something working for them. Just like Nigerians, the Flanks. Yeah. You understand? And that, that ageless guy, Gradel, if... I think yeah. I've been to three Afcon or something. Yeah. Gradel is still there ahead of Wilfred Saha from you know, yeah. Palace. And, and you have and you have a thirty-seven year old, um Segi. I, yes. Mm, yeah. I think he's the oldest man in the yes, couple of nations. There is this Fulham guy also off front. Mm. Siri. I mean Siri or something. Yeah. That one is still there. Then you have former Tottenham and player, you know, at the back, Sergio Aurel. Yeah. That one is there. And you know, the team is just full of you know stars that know how to get it right well they didn't get it right against the cultural game but against algerians they took algerians to the cleaner egyptians they have not really lighting up the competition so far do you fancy their chance against cordova now um let me just digress a little bit now they said too many cooks spoiled you you know too many cooks spoiled the soup and now you have you have a star studded team like the Iverians. even they have depth on their squad the bench alone is enough to beat any team. Definitely. Now I tell you what. Now you're, you're playing against the Egyptians, twenty-five. I mean, twenty-five times at the, the Afcon. You are seven times winner. You have to be careful because these guys they still want to make history stand. Yes. And now um, the Ivorians stars, no problem. But now you're playing against a Salah that knew the error he made in the first game. Not just a Salah right now. The entire Egyptian the team. Entire they team. knew the error they made in the first game. Don't let these guys run for God's sake. But at the same time, see, I, I tell you what, the Ivorians. They're going to be a little bit tactical. Your flanks, you have to be careful about the flanks. And um, Salah has to look at set pieces and all that. I give it to the Iverians. One, on one side, arrows of stars that know exactly what they want. I mean, uh, you, have, you have one of the best midfielders in this tournament in that team. Um, it was the Kessie. Yeah. So it's going to be a very difficult game for both sides. But I tell you what, we're not going to see goals in this game. Probably one or two goals. Really? Yeah, we're not going to see goals in this game. Everybody has to be very, very careful about with, their with, with, with the Egyptian teams that, you know, they have not been able to put themselves together in this competition, you know, and with the flurry of, you know, stars, like you mentioned, you know, in the Ivorian team and the way they come at you, you know, and just like the guy you mentioned, now Frank Kessie in the midfield, yeah. you know, the way it orchestrates, and you still believe that we won't see flurry of goals. At every, in every game you play, you, you go back, you sit down and you look at the errors you make, you try to patch those errors. And you do those things at training. The Egyptians don't know exactly where the fault is. I mean, we saw we, we saw the, the, the games they played after the Nigerian game, or how they came out, you know, trying to like run on the flanks and get the goals, trying to get set pieces and all that. They come at you very, very crafty, like you've always said. So they're gonna come out crafty this time, and but they're gonna watch out for. And the Africans have to watch out for. I mean, uh, what's his name? Salah. Salah. Best player, you know, best player. Yes, this guy has won virtually everything in Africa. So. It's going to be a very difficult game for both sides, but there, there aren't going to be goals in this game. Let's look at you know one, one of the things that, just like you mentioned now, I'm wary about for the Ivorians is the aggressive you know tackling. Mm, yeah, you understand? And you know you know, it's worked against Algeria because you know the physicality. Yeah, you know, uh, they use that you know to to you know to to, to to edge out the Algerians in terms of you know physical marking and all that. But another North African team. They are very crafty and at the slightest push, they go down. Yeah. They start rolling on the floor. You know, it's, do you think it's a game of mentality or 
men, you know, the, the mental strength of the Ivorians as of the craftiness of, you know, of, of the Egyptian team? What is have to look at, you know? Well, I'm, I'm going to tag that game, um, the physicality and the craftiness. That's what I'm going to tag that game because the Ivorians, they're known for their physicality. Definitely. Yeah, but at the same time, they are very tactical side. You, you have, you have, very, very you have a Zaha, you have a, a Pepe, you know, um, yeah. that can, yes, that can flip. Pepe. A Pepe. Pepe on the right. Yeah. And even, you have um, Gradel on the left. Yeah, even a Pepe can flip position in the, in the attack. Yes. We saw him do it in you know, in previous game. But you have to be careful about the North Africans. They're going to frustrate you. Definitely. They're going to, they're going to get under your skin. They're going to make you consider those yellow card. And when you get a yellow card, you're not giving a hundred. You're giving probably twenty or thirty. So yeah. it's going to be a highly tactical game because they know. Look, if I score ahead of you, I'm going to change my formation and probably manage that game to the end. Just it. That's exactly what happened against you. And you know, probably we're going to see Zaha do his trick this time. You know, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the phone, you know, the phone line to call is there. We were, we we're expecting our audience, our fans out there, to you know, to make the call to the studio. We have fantastic, you know, prices waiting for you. We have, you know, the mod you see on the table here is yours. You know, make predictions on today's matches. Ivory Coast against Egypt. Then you have money against Equatorial Guinea. If you get the predictions right, you can even get the shirt that I'm wearing. You can't tell. You can, you know, Nigerian Jesse is, is still there. Just by the fact that the Super Eagles are out of the competition, we can see who are, we are ready to give you, you know, Nigerian Jesse with your name customized at the back of it. Just make a call to, you know, to the studio. Make a prediction any, on any of today's matches. When you get it right, the prices are yours. Joel, before we go, let's quickly look at this. The last friendly between Ivory Coast and Egypt ended in 4-2 in favor of the Ivory Coast. Yeah. And the majority of the players that played that friendly, you know, stick on, you know, they compose, they comprise the team that, you mm -hmm. know, they make up the team that is out there in, 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 in Cameroon. Okay. Knowing fully well that we know each other, yeah. besides each other, yeah. you know, at full length, do you, which team are you, are you backing to be, you know, to carry the day today? Ah, uh, um, okay. Um, Ivorians, they made 24 appearance, you know, the AFCON. Um, Egyptians have made 25 appearance, you know, winning that seven times, and Ivorians twice. Um, notwithstanding, yeah, numbers don't lie anyway. But at the same time, um, we have to look at the Egyptians. These guys, they keep bringing it. They keep bringing it. And do you know why they, they keep bringing it? You have about seven, eight players playing the same club, Zamalek, Al Ali. And they've been consistent over the years. And they give you results. And, you know, now, it has to the group of them, you know, played in the... Hello? 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 Hello. Hello. Morning. Welcome Hello. to the studio. What's your name? Where are you calling us from? Um, I'm 2 one in favor of Ivy Coast. 2 one in favor of Ivy Coast. What's your name? Where are you calling us from? Why are you guys? Your name. Your name and where you're calling from. We can't get your name. If, you, if, if, we can, if we don't get your name, we might not be able to get you your price. We need to get your name and where you're coming from. Abraham, calling from Shomolu. Okay, Abraham, thank you. 2 1 in favor of my request. Thank you. We'll note that. Thank you. Okay. From Shomolu says, I request. So, just as you're saying, you, you know, they, they recently concluded you know, competition they played, the Arab or they played in okay. Qatar. Mm -hmm. You know, the bulk of you know the Egyptian teams were made from you know from their from their local league yeah. you know, with some addition from Europe and all yeah. that. But despite that, they've not been able to you know excel so far in the competition. Probably they needed to do what they need to do and you know in, in qualify for the you know, round of sixteen. Yeah. And, you know the quarterfinal is in, this, is in their hands now against mighty Ivorians. Now, like I said, I've, I've already said, when, when you keep players together for a longer period, you understand, they, they have this cohesiveness, they have this cohesion, they have this understanding, synergy, yeah. Yeah, synergy and all that. And it's, it's very difficult to beat such a team because tactically they're going to be so balanced, play series of friendly matches, competitions and all that. So it's going to be a little bit difficult for the Ivorians too because you see these guys are so, they're so cohesive. Even if they don't give you this whole ticket taker style of football, they are very pacey on the wings. Mm. So I wonder what, what Pope is going to do today. Probably is going to come in through the middle. Because we see him doing, I mean, do it at Arsenal. Come in through the middle, give the pass, and probably wait for a pull-out. Even if you don't use your head a lot. So 
It's going to be a tight game here and there. Like I said, there won't be goals in that game. You know, yeah, but this is the same Egypt. Like, Nigeria took the clean as we, you know, without spirited performance for them because they were no just one. They were no way against the Super Eagles. And if you want to measure in terms of performance, you still want, I, I, in my opinion, I want to put the, you know, the Ivorians ahead of Super Eagles. So, I just want to understand, even though games are not exactly we you know we analyze it on paper yeah i want to put the performance of the ivorians ahead of you know super eagles in this competition okay and if super eagles could defeat egyptians egyptians that is it so they can do it you know, i don't see the ivorians <laughs> not being able to do it oh what you meant i think it doesn't work that way yeah because um right now no, normally you have to watch i mean previous games of your opponent you know the coaching crafts to watch previous games try to look at their strong points you know their weakness how this guy how this go come about what happened why that guy wasn't marked how come these set pieces come about and stuff so they have to go to go back to i mean to training and make sure such things don't occur anymore so like i said the king the teams keep progressing you know match in match out and and i tell you what you see these guys they have tacticians on their team probably that was what we, what we were lacking i don't know but like let's, saying, let's, let's imagine a situation whereby, you know, the the Egyptians yeah. do what Tunisians did to Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> by clipping the wings. Yeah. What is the option? What option do the Ivorians have in the midfield? Even though they have a Mercurial player like you know Frank Kessie, mm. that that guy is, is you know is wonderful. It's wonderful. He's been touted to come to you know other European, I mean, big European clubs. Yeah. But in the midfield, in the midfield, what do you think? Because we've not seen the Ivorians play in the midfield so far. It's just the flanks. Now, a, a typical Egyptian, they, they always flip formations when they're playing. They start with a 4 3 2 1. Before you know what's happening, they give you a 3 5 2 formation, you know, um, loading the midfield. At the same time, watching exactly what you're doing. Now, if you're not scoring, if, if, I, don't, if, if, you don't, if I don't score, you're not scoring. So, even if I block the wings, but if you block the wings, you can't take away the midfield from the Ivorians. Their physicality, which is going to be on display today. Yeah. Now, how are you going to create those openings? How are you going to open those Egyptian defense and let those runs come in? So I'm go we're going to see a lot of set pieces coming both sides on the edges. Because if I if I choke up my midfield, yeah, you choke up your midfield. Let's just start knocking the game. Probably you know take it to, to penalties. Yeah, but I don't think that will happen. You you have you have a fantastic Salah that knows how to take set pieces. Yeah, runs and everything. Yeah, and yeah. That. Then you also have a Pepe. You know, a, a Pepe. Yeah. That you know, even though he's, you know, the, uh, a lot of people are not singing his name. Mm. You know, but when he scores, he scores. When he needs to score, he scores because yeah. the way he's been getting his goals in the, in, in the ongoing outcome, you need to understand that okay, this guy knows this thing that he's playing with. You know, and you understand the understanding is there. The synergy in their team is there because the way he took his goals so far, you will say that you know he, 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 the composure. Yeah. He, you know, he, he, he possesses in the, in the 18 to take his goals. It's wonderful colors. And you understand that, fine, if the flanks are being tightened by, yeah, by both sides, to the middle. it is not going to be the battle of the midfield. The Egyptians, we didn't see them, you know, come to party against the Pirates because yeah. we overran them in the yeah. midfield. Yeah. So they also might be looking towards playing in the, in, on the flanks. Yes, I, I think everybody has that technique, you know, because um, everybody has their strong point and all that. I, I remember... Um, back in the days when we had people like Rashidi Yekini, you know, Mutua de Poju, and we're playing a team that, you know, you want to take the midfield from us, fine, no problem, we're going to keep bringing area balls because we are good at, you know, using the head yeah. when you have a Mutu, a Yekini down, all that. So it's going to be tactics for tactics right now. So yeah. the better side will claim the day. <laughs> Just to remind you that you can still be part of the program, the numbers is there on the screen to call, call into the studio I'm here for you to, you know, to win. The jobs are seen on the table. Yeah, I believe you know you appreciate it. It's car. It's it's a it is souvenir that you appreciate you know for being part of the Afcon 2022 in, in out there in Cameroon. Uh, before we go on a break now, let's quickly say this, Joel. When we come back, I mean when we come back, we'll be talking about the kind of you know reaction coming after the Super Eagles exit. Mm. A lot of people are angry. Understand, and a lot of Nigerians they've you know expressed their their utter disappointment, dissatisfaction, and dissatisfaction all on you know on the social media, you know trollings, yeah. bantering, and yeah. all that. But I still I just want to get your you know your random opinion on this. What do you think will be the reaction of Super Eagles in World Cup qualifier? It's just two matches to qualify for the World Cup. 
and Iguavon said he has not resigned. Okay. What's your opinion on that? First off, um, Iguavon was employed as a temporary coach. He just took the players to Afton. Then after the Afton, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. We don't know if he's going to be retained as a coach to take these boys to Ghana and play the half qualifiers. I don't know if he will be the one or we're going to expect the uh, Portuguese to come. Uh, but, you know, by and large, um, these boys are professional players. When you lose a game, you know, you have the psychology. Yeah, I, I lost that game, but you have to prepare for next game. You have to prepare for the big one coming up, which is the World Cup. So, um, the, the, the Afghan is gone for Nigeria and it's gone. So, let's just look ahead and prepare for the next game in terms of, you know, um, putting our acts together, play a little bit of more friendlies, try and be cohesive, play a little play pattern and stuff like that so we can be prepared and face Ghana. Because remember, it's, gonna, it's a two legged affair. We go to Kumasi yes, first, then come to Nigeria first, and play. So, first match in Accra, then second match, you know. Yeah. Is it Abuja or the Eagles have taken everything, you know, they, they, yeah, taking it with a, with a pinch of salt and believing that, yes, we have a big one coming up. So, it's normal. You lose a game and you get a little bit worried, then prepare for the next game. Should Iguavon be retained alongside with Jose Pesero? Or Iguavon should just go back to his technical, you know, what's it called, technical bag, in back team, or whatever position he's holding, and let the, you know, the incoming man take full charge of the super heroes. We have to be fair to ourselves as Nigerians, for God's sake. We've seen what the government done in the past and what he just did, you know, in the Afghan. Left for me, I'm going to let the government continue with this thing because, yeah, you know, I think he knows the, the boys better. They've been in camp for a couple of periods, but he can side the player. He can talk to them and all that. So, but at the same time, you're bringing in a white man. We don't know who he is. His, his pedigree, we don't know. And um, I, I don't know if we could be let in. You probably don't allow journalists to see his contract and all that. What is his mandate? What are you telling this guy to come and do? Do you know our players? What playing pattern are you bringing? But we have, we have a game in March coming up, a very important game in Ghana. So um, for me, Iguavon should continue. Let's see some of the highlights of, you know, of yesterday's matches. When we come back, we'll be you know, telling you about the reaction of some of the you know, legends of Super Eagles and you know, some sport administrators also expressing their disappointment about you know, the performance of the Super Eagles in, uh, in Cameroon and what many cited as you know, the purpose of our, you know, of, of our shady, shady performance and our early exits because Nigerian Super Eagles was built to play in the finals of the half When we come back, we'll look into more issues. Stay tuned with us.